Yeah. Why do I always get cut out? Um, oh, no. Welcome to the Arcade.ie book club. Um, and this evening we are going to be... Oh, I'm getting fear. Oh, oh I, know, I know what that was. Um, that was my link open that I sent on. So my bad. Sorry, technical issues. But at least we started on time. Um, yeah. Yeah, bro. So, you're listening to the Arcade.ie book club and joining me this evening is, um, or sorry, are Adam and Mary. Um, I'm going to be discussing uh, Leah Bardugo's Wonder Woman Warbringer uh, novel um, as selected by Mary for September's book of the month. So do you want to give us a bit of a summary? Um, yeah, I'll give you the summary from Goodreads because it does a much better job than me. Um, Daughter of Mortals, Princess Diana longs to prove herself to her legendary warrior sisters, but when the opportunity finally comes, she throws away her chance of glory and breaks Amazon law, risking exile to save a mortal. Diana will soon learn that she has rescued no ordinary girl and that with a single brave act, she may have doomed the world. See, wasn't that much neater than me trying to yeah, solve my way through that? Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd like you to retry and see if you can summarize it. Uh, so, no pressure. I mean, Mary, you you picked it. So, what was you? What's your? I mean, what was your? What was your initial? What, what was the reason behind it? Why? Like, why did you select that for September? Honestly, the reason was mainly because Leo Bar Leah Bardugo wrote it, okay. and she wrote my favorite series ever, the Six of Crows series. And if you haven't read that, then you need to get your priorities right and read it immediately. Um, and that goes for you too as well, because I know you haven't read it yet. Yes, yes. Um, but she is a fantastic writer, and she—it's not that you know—it's not that she uses a lot of purple prose or anything like that. She just makes everything sound so effortlessly easy to understand, you know, really easy to visualize. And um, you know, I love Wonder Woman, so I figured, right, Leah Bardugo plus Wonder Woman—it's going to be amazing, obviously. And did it live up to your expectations? Um, yes, I was very surprised at some of the stuff in it, I have to say, um, but I don't know. Yes and no, I suppose. Uh, overall, I really, really enjoyed the book. Um, at the very beginning, I thought I could see things. I thought I was real arrogant. I thought, okay, he's definitely going to be the bad guy. She's definitely going to be amazing, you know, and it was kind of turned on its head a little bit. Plus, I thought we would see much, much more of Themyscira. But at the same time, I'm glad we didn't. I'm glad we saw Diana out in the real world, because that's what I loved about the movie the most is you know, seeing her being weird and, you know, especially whenever she, um, Theo, one of the main, one of the characters, Theo, said something about Google and she was like, oh, Google, is that one of your gods? Yes. <laughs> that was so funny, you know, and kind of true in a way. But um, overall, I really enjoyed the book, especially all the, like, it's a lot of what she talked about and it was just so relevant to what, to, to today, you know, she had a lot of really, really interesting insights. And, um, you yeah, know, it just felt like very, very relevant. It was really different from the Six of Crows book. It was in a good way. I did enjoy it. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I'll be honest with you. What I was a little, what? what? I assume she's gone. Uh, I was saying, uh, I was a little apprehensive um, when, when, when we announced the book because uh, it's, it's not the first superhero novel I've ever read. Um, but it was probably one of the first DC comics uh, type novels I've ever picked up. Um, and then again, I'm not in, uh, entirely au fait with Wonder Woman. Um, I, I'm not the biggest DC fan um, or the biggest DC collector. I enjoy their work, but I'm not, I don't collect a lot of it. Um, so when, when, you know, when the novel, when the book came in, and just to just to comment, the I got the um, the hardback version of the book. Um, with the, the sleeve, the kind of the rust and navy coloured sleeve. Uh, yeah. and it's beautiful, beautiful book. Um, but I, I was actually pleasantly surprised. Um, I, I haven't read any of, I haven't read Bardugo before. I haven't, I'm not, I'm not familiar with her style or her workings. Um, but I think you're, I, I, what, what you said about her uh, ability, ability to kind of, um, describe a situation, describe a scenario, describe a, an event or even a character without getting lost uh, in detail. Um, there's just enough given to you to let you kind of, you know, put the structure on it and everything else after that then is, um, it, it's kind of there for, for you to kind of work with. And I, same with 
uh, when you, I agree with you about Tim Askier as well. Part of you was like, oh, I'd love to know more about this. I'd love to know more about that. But the best Wonder Woman stories are always when Wonder Woman is off kind of finding her, finding her place um, mm -hmm. in, in, you know, in modern society or the modern world. But I have to say that the, and, and it's, not, it's not a spoiler, but when she's going to visit the Oracle, I just, I actually, I really, really enjoyed um, that, that, just that moment um, because it, there's a lot going on. There's a lot happening on Themyscira at that moment. And we, it, we could have easily gotten lost in everything that she was trying to do and trying to tell us. But it's just like she, she, she's, she's really good at finding a balance and she's really, really good find that balance in her characters as well. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, not every situation like, if, like, like with, uh, I'm going to mispronounce her name. Um, what, is it Ar Aria or Alia? Alia, I was calling her. Yeah. Um, there were there were those those moments where she just has that kind of inner monologue, um, and it just it just kind of diffuses a lot of tension, or it just it's just you know it just stops the book from being overly dramatic, um, mm -hmm. while she's just trying to you know um, find her place. And I yeah no I like I am I, um, actually I, I did enjoy it. I, I not that I, I didn't expect myself to like it as much, but I re I really really did. Mm. And what about you, Adam? Um, I'm going to make a bold statement and say it's by far my favourite book of this book club so far. Oh, like really? Was, that is a very yeah. bold statement. That is. Um, no, like it, it was very unexpected because I'm very much not a DC person at all. Um, I'm very much a Marvel person, but this book was really, really good. And like I was surprised how much I did like it and how much more I like Wonder Woman now, I suppose. Um, yeah, like the characters were interesting. I don't know how I feel about Diana herself. Like, I feel like she was a bit much, like she was very much dragged along by the plot as opposed to carving her way in the plot. And I felt like the supporting characters were um, much more appealing, I suppose. And they were a bit quirkier, a bit um, more interesting. So um, I kind of enjoyed following their story arts and the twists and turns, like especially at the end, I was like, oh my God, like it was a bit unpredictable. Like the, yeah. it was one moment near the end and I was like, oh my God, didn't see that coming, yeah. um, which, was, which was good. Cause like I, I was worried that it would be a very predictable YA book totally. and it wasn't. Yeah, I totally <laughs> disagree though, but what you said about Diana, oh my God, I think it's just cause we're so familiar with her as a character that the stuff, we kind of just take her for granted almost. I think she's a really interesting character and I hardcore loved her in this book. But I think she, maybe she does um, get a wee bit shown up as well because Vertigo is so good at writing characters. Her characterization is so excellent that, you know, all of her, all the minor characters that would just fade into the background in any other book stand mm -hmm. out so much because they're so colorful and they're just so quirky and bright and just See, so think, well written. I think, I, th I think that is the issue I have with Diana in this though. I would have liked to have seen just something a little, a little different. I know she's a little younger than we, uh, than we're used to, um, but I, I just, mm. that same kind of, oh, I'm the, the, uh, I'm Princess of the Mascara, my mother is Hippolyta, and I am, I'm in her shadow, and, you know, I'm trying to find my, my, my place among the Amazons, and I just, it, it just wasn't enough, like, I, like, I think we've seen a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot, we've seen that a lot from her character, and I know that's, you know, it's it kind of inherent to who Wonder Woman is, um in, in the the wider dc universe and stuff like that it's about you know well i have all this strength of all this ability but ultimately uh, it's not she's, she's not the same until she has the kind of you know the respect and um the the sense the sense of belonging um that she yearns for but i i don't know i i, th I think because uh, like you were saying there mary that there were all these other characters that are introduced that are only very very you know they're even because i mean obviously you know, we have a sporting we have a sporting uh, roster of characters but even the minor ones like i the way um certain characters are scripts at the very very start like uh, rani and mave um like i felt i i, I thought they were i like i was like okay Jenny, yeah, you go off and do your you do your thing let's just focus on these characters i mean i just um it's like we've seen diana's story um in, in animated, in comics, in, in the movie now, in the TV series. Um, do you know what I mean? We've, we've seen it. I, I just, I would have seen a little, just a little different. Um, 
but it just it, it, it didn't detract from me entirely but like Adam said it did, it did almost verge uh, very very hard into the YA or especially her character it's uh, like definitely a coming of age story for her yes yeah but I think it was really clever with the fact that she knows that everybody's just familiar with with Wonder Woman it would be kind of just gimmicky to try and do something shocking with her character especially because yeah, that, that, that's fair like, that, that's a possibility um, I just I, I, she took this yeah, she just, I suppose, took this opportunity to just, like, make this book a really good book, not just a Wonder Woman book. Yeah. And yeah. I really appreciate how she put so much work into all the characters. Like, I definitely would have loved to see more of Maeve. I mean, an Irish Amazon, hell yeah, bring it on. But um, maybe, uh, who knows? Like, I mean, that was kinda, the book was kind of left open, you know? Yeah, it's definitely open for a sequel, I think. And I think that's definitely yeah. going to happen. Oh, I think it's really well received. Like, the good the Goodreads um, rating is 4.2, I think, which is really high for Goodreads. Yeah. Um, your favorite character anyway who stood out who stood out was a good character the best character um, your favorite i really liked nim i don't yeah. know why i think she was just really quirky and i was like oh i appreciate this um and her banter with Tio the whole way through it, i was like oh my god um yeah i like i, I actually like them all like it's hard yeah, there's no, there's, yeah Mary, there's, there's no for me there was no one that i was like Ugh, I'm, I'm done with this character. I like, you know, like there was no, there were no, there was nobody weak enough for me to kind of go, just, just be done with, just go away. Yeah. Um, favorite, um, I like Nim. Um, yeah, I think Maeve. I know it's bizarre, but like, I like that. I just because the other way, it, like, she was, you know, her character, like her, she died at the the ambush, uh, and then like the her, she said the prayer to Saint Bridget of, of County Kildare. I don't know. It was just. I don't know. It was. I, I think it was like, yeah. It came out of nowhere. It was like, oh my god, there's an Irish Amazon. It was like, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I think I, I actually I did enjoy Nim um, a lot uh, as well. Yeah, Nim reminded me of. You remember that book we read at the very start of the year, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, and mm -hmm. um, Carouse's best friend. What was she yes. called? Something with a Z. But anyway, she was like. Oh. Very, very similar. I think there's a kind of character like that in almost every YA book is like the really, like, really outgoing, loud fr best friend. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, cookie face. Everything that they have to want to be. And then you have the nerdy, techie best friend. Yeah. Like, it's all, it was, they were very stereotypical, but like, it worked. The balance worked. And it was like, oh, I love it. Like, the dynamics of the group were really good. Really good, yeah. But I'll tell you, J Jason broke my goddamn heart. Okay. We're not going to talk about broke that, are we? <laughs> <sighs> because at first I was kind of like, oh, meh, Jason, oh my god, he's such an a-hole. But then I kind of fell in love with him. And then by the end, I was seriously not thinking, because at the very, very beginning, I was like, I bet that guy's bad. I bet it, right? That was my prediction for the whole thing. And then I'm just going to warn like, them, maybe spoilers, anyone listening, maybe spoilers. <laughs> no, I, 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 when, when Ali was thinking about the very start, you're like, oh, he's so controlling, he's so this, I'm like, oh, he's going to be the bad guy. Yeah, he's going to be the bad guy. But as the novel goes on, you start to think, oh my God, I was wrong. Jason's amazing. Yeah. And then right at the very last second, Bardugo just, you know, Left kicked the rug. Didn't see it coming. I, I literally did not see that coming at all. Um, do you think the story was plot based or character driven? Um, or a bit of both. A bit of both, I think. Both, yeah. Because, I mean, the whole thing was get Alia to the, you know, it was like get him to the Greek with Russell Brand. Mm. You know, it was the whole, um, and it, 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 well, I suppose it was all kind of along for the ride, really, but it was the characters you cared about. It was like a big Greek road trip. It yes. was, yeah, it was like a road trip. <laughs> like, it, it worked, though. Like, it's it was like a road trip. It's going to be the sequel. That's going to be the sequel now. Yeah, <laughs> that's weird shit, you know, like, planes and plane crashes and parachutes and guns and there was so much in it so much yeah yeah it was crazy that was only one book yeah. when you think of all the ya we read and nothing happens for like 300 pages there was a part i'm still confused about though um, and i don't know if it's verging into spoiler territory but you know the party and when um like the big party they had the, was it the ball or something i can't remember yeah, and jason, yeah, and jason yeah. made Ali a go to it um, who set that up? Because I'm really confused. Was were they attacked, or did Jason set that whole thing up? Like, was that a, a big fix to get them out of there, or was that actually the bad guys attacking them? That might have been just the bad guys because he admitted himself that there were still people that were going to be after, but he had his own crazy psycho other shit going on. So I really don't know. I didn't even think about that. Mm. Yeah, it didn't. I think he 
people ask about the blue pulse light gun thing, but then I thought that might have been just part of the whole superhero universe, whatever, that you're just kind of, no, they have a pulse light gun thing that doesn't have bullets. That's just part of this world, I guess. Yeah. Mm. But, um, well, I'm not sure, but um, one of the really good things about the book, obviously, is that it's so, so um, diverse. Yeah. Yeah. Cast wise. And um, like you have no problem picturing the character. Yeah. So that was really good, you know? And I think in Bardugo's other books, she was really good at like diversity as well. But this is definitely by far, like I saw a, a fan picture of the cast of characters for Warbringer and um, they were all people of color except Diana. Yeah. It was really cool. That was another part of the, the book that really good. Did you have another question, Jack? Um, I suppose I like I mentioned there that I I, I was a kind of a bit um, I was a bit nervous about getting into the book, and you know, I always like a lot of a lot of, a lot of the past books that we've talked about or we've read as part of book club. I'm always I always talk about the hook, you know, the, the thing that kind of just pulls you right in. Um, I. I I didn't get a hook. I didn't get a hook with one. That's, I'm not I'm not saying I didn't enjoy it. Uh, I like as I said at the very start, I really did. But did anybody else did, were any of you kind of hooked like on the first page or um, or did you? Because it, it took me a bit. It took. I'll be honest with you. It took me about two or three chapters to actually get into the book. Yeah. No, I would definitely agree. I remember. I remember after I finished the first chapter with the race thing. Yes. And kind of thinking in my head, I wonder did Bardugo kind of just random, did she have like lots of different scenes that she was going to start with and just kind of randomly pick this one? Because it, it just seemed like it a did, yeah, thing to That's what I was going to say to you, because um, for me, it, it like having, having never read, um, you know, a, a novel of a, of a DC superhero before, right? I, I, I couldn't not kind of storyboard it in terms of a comic book panel. Um, mm -hmm. And I think Bardugo kind of does, I, I don't know, part of me kind of felt it was kind of intentional um, because we talked about her visuals and like that um, a, a, comic book, a comic book panel or a page can be very, very, can be very, very noisy. So it's, it is an art form in a sense to, you know, lay out a panel, lay out a structure the same way you do a page when you're writing. And I think she translates like, the comic panel to, 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 um, to the novel really, really well. Mm. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't help but break it down that way. Um, you know, so even with the first chapter of the race and the way it's all done, it, I don't, it, it's sequenced for me in, in, in a very kind of, um, in that kind of comic book style format. I don't know, I, maybe I'm just being weird. Um, no, now that you mention it, I can very clearly see how that would break down very easily. You know, the race, the saving from the wreckage, the storm. Yes. The yeah, the whole thing, it, 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 it's literally... The, that the, for each chapter is almost like an issue of a comic book because um, it can all be broken down. Yeah. Who knows? Um, Bardugo could be involved in a in a comic book project. I would be so for that. Mm. But yeah. And you know, one, I mean, the Justice League film is coming out. The next one is coming out next year, isn't it? Yes. Is it next year? Yes. Yeah. So maybe that would be maybe it'd be another novel. Maybe it'd be another comic book. But I mean, a comic book would be great. She's obviously really good at, at like compartmentalizing that kind of stuff. But although I wasn't a major fan of it starting with a race at first, I'm kind of, I don't know even know how it would even start differently as a good thing because obviously she spends a lot of time at the cliffs, but it can't just start at her staring out at the water and then suddenly seeing a shipwreck, you know? <laughs> That'd be so cliche. But, yeah, it, it was good. Oh, look, there's a shipwreck. This is an interesting Sunday. Um, it was good because it showed the whole race thing about how she wants her mother's approval and her sister's approval mm -hmm. and... But then she's saving someone instead of winning the race and put her yes. for everything before her own pride, which was like a very good foot to start on, I suppose. Yeah. But she grew so do much have... over the course of the whole book, like I think. She like, does, Diana yeah. at the end was a very different person to Diana at the beginning. Yes, yes, she's, she, she is. She, I think she, she's, more, she's more aware of herself. Um, yeah. not, not necessarily more confident in herself, you are not more... Um, you know, sure of her, her, of her role or her place or her, her, her Amazon background or that. But just, I think there, there is that kind of more. She has developed. She has grown. She has experienced an awful lot more. Um, I'm sure you'd experience a lot more if you died and came back too, Declan. Yes. <laughs> but like, what I'm saying, <laughs> really? It's not just a reset button. Um, 
But what I'm saying is, the way we were talking about how the, the book is kind of left open-ended in terms of there, there could be a sequel here. Mm. That, this is, that maybe Bardugo was saying, we're not done with this, this, this incarnation of Diana just yet, that there is more for her uh, to come. Uh, so I don't know. But about, also, but, like the Alia having her powers or whatever she has now as well, I feel like that's going to be something that will be developed further. Yeah, I'd love uh, to see more actually. Yeah, because now she's kind of she's got something there. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to meet again. They have such a nice friendship, and that's something else I noticed about the book is that you know, in some ways, the girl characters they can be wild bitchy, they can be wild, mm. just like oh, I hate her because she has this thing and I don't, or she's pretty and I hate that. It was so nice. It was just Diana as well, such a humble character that it was really easy for her to like highlight the good in other women and. It was just really refreshing to see that instead of like arguing over boys and hating themselves because of the way they look and stuff. It was really refreshing. But you see that though as well with, between uh, Hippolyta and um, Tech. Tech. Like they, they talk, you know, when they're talking about Diana's birth and the arguments there, and then it just juxtaposes them then with the scene at the table where you know she talks about her mother. Tech is the only person that could ever make uh, the queen snort while laughing. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean that they're like even though Diana's place, Diana being born was a thorn or a big kind of um, scar in let's say Amazonian society, that Tech was able to look past that. It, it was that there was she was able to separate her role as you know second in command at the Queen and that what that was. To, and but outside of that, they were they were sisters, they were best friends. Um, so it was letting go of that kind of stuff. So maybe that was what we were looking at. Yeah. Diana and Alia then as well, that you have that kind of evolution of their characters and their friendship. Yeah, no, that, it was really, really nice, like, and especially with Nim and Alia, you know, when Nim was just like, it's us against the world, everybody sucks, they're the best. You know, it was just such a, there were so many nice friendships. I mean, yeah. obviously, it was a nice friendship between Jason and some people, but then he just went and shit on it, didn't he? I didn't uh, expect it. That was so crazy. See, I, I, I did at the start, but I start. I I I fell into that trap then of oh wait what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like the whole thing, the story about those two goddesses and the stars or whatever, and then oh yeah. race and Diana, and I was like, oh my god, this I I'm melting, you know? And then he's loosening up. Um, as well, I, I was gonna stay. I have one last, one last question. Um. Did the book change your opinion about Diana, uh, or Wonder Woman as a whole? No. For me, yes. Yeah. Would you be more? Yeah. Like that's like especially for I suppose for me and Adam really would be because Mary, you, you're you you're a fan of Wonder Woman anyway, or would you be? Yeah. No. I mean, I'm not a major fan, but I'm I'm a fan of Wonder Woman, and like okay. something about this book changed the way I thought she would be. Okay. Exactly the way I thought she would be. Yeah. Okay. So I suppose let me rephrase the question then. Uh, like Adam, would you be more willing to go out and maybe pick up a Wonder Woman? Um, comic book series, a graphic novel now. Only if Lee Bardugo actually wrote it. <laughs> but like, no, I feel like the Wonder Woman movie would have been way better if this was the script for it. Like, I, I like the Wonder Woman movie, but this would have blown my mind. I would have been like, oh my god, this is cool. This is current. It's like it was yeah. cool the way it wasn't. Let's do a World War Two type story or World War One type story. It was contemporary. Like, it was Diana Prince discovering the world in today's world. It wasn't like. I don't know. I just yeah, I really liked it. Well, it was relatable. Really it was fun. It was not what I expected, mm. and I actually appreciate that. But there'd be no Chris Pine. So yeah, I take it. Theo, he could have been Theo or something. I don't know. No, he couldn't. Theo was like, I, well, Hispanic or or black, one of the two. Was he definitely not Chris Pine? Okay, <laughs> they would have slotted him in somewhere. Oh. Not enough of him. He improves every movie he's in. Oh, he really I'm fine not to Adam. Me. Me. I don't get him. How about you, Dick? Did you no, change no, your opinion no. on Wonder Woman? No, I mean, like, like, like I was saying, I'm not, I'm not the biggest, I'm not the biggest DC collector. I mean, I, I like a Catwoman, all right, but um, in, uh, outside of outside, in, with the Justice League, not, I don't really buy into it. It's just, it, I never really gotten into it. Um, but I have, like, I've always enjoyed Wonder Woman's character, particularly in the animated movies. Um, I always really kind of gravitate towards uh, Wonder Woman, just because she is so freaking deadly. Um, and like, I, I, 
aircraft, invisible aircraft thing. I did for one second think that she would have like snuck some of that invisible horse <laughs> on so she could like make the plane invisible. I was so waiting for that to happen. <laughs> it yeah. did. It did. Um, I um, I mean, yeah, like I said, I, I did enjoy the book. It hasn't changed my opinion of Leanne. Like, I, I don't dislike Leanne now, or I don't like her even more. I just, it was a good book. Um, I, I that, like that, same as Adam. I wouldn't rush out of my way to pick up a, a Wonder Woman um, comic book series now, or like unless, it, like unless I found out, you know, there was something huge about her or something that was really worth picking up. Um, for I just know, like not nothing like that. If there was a sequel to the book, I would I would definitely pick it up. I'd like to, I'd like to see more of what Virgil does with it, um, and I'd love to maybe see her take on other characters. I think that'd be kind of cool. Um, you there know, are three, there's three other that. books out there. Um, there's a Batman book, there's a Catwoman book, and there's a Superman book. And I think <laughs> they're in the same universe. Is there now? Well, Marie Lu yeah, different authors. Marie Lu's doing Batman. Yeah, and then Sarah J. They're Mass is doing Catwoman, and Matt De La Pena is doing Superman. Wow, okay. Well, remind me not to pick up the Catwoman one. Remind you not to pick up the Catwoman one? Mm -hmm. Not a major fan of Sarah J. Mass writing. Oh, right, okay, because I thought you were first a major fan of Catwoman. Oh, you got a hell Mary. No, I also like Catwoman. Yeah, it's all right, it's a whole no for me. Um... I'm just, yeah, Sarah uh, Oh, Alan's read her stuff. Um, yeah. I don't know. I might pick it up. But Throne of Glass is meant to be really good, isn't it? Throne of Glass? Eh. Uh, I've heard like some really bad reviews on like tropes and just cliches. And yeah. Candy or something from like a person she doesn't know if her, it's her enemy and she eats it. And it's like, girl, you're an assassin, you're eating candy from a stranger. <laughs> Lesson 101. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's our what's our October book? What should everybody be reading? Oh, wait, the stars first. How many stars would you give one woman Warbringer? Out of five, three. Out of five. Damn, I'm giving four. I would give three and a half. Oh, so we're averaging out of three and a half. I think that's pretty yeah, good for what we yeah, did. Exactly. It wasn't it wasn't a bad book though. I am not um yeah, no nobody had anything really negative to say about it. Um, it was very easy to read. It wasn't like a yeah, struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, like like that I, I would I probably glide through hundred pages in a night like um yeah. easily. Uh, I would have to kind of go like, what's happening? Um so yeah, no, it was actually I yeah, it was a good book. Three and a, three and a half stars for Wonder Woman War Ringer by Leah Bardugo. Um, mm. So what's our what's our next book? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. <laughs> so um, October's book is All the Crooked Saints by Maggie Stiefvader. Stiefvader, one of the two. Um, and it is about uh, the Soria family who live in Bicho Raro in Colorado. And basically they all have the ability to perform unusual miracles. Um, and, you know, it, if you're looking for a miracle, it's not... It, it takes something to get one. Like you have to sacrifice to get a miracle. It's kind of a difficult explanation for the book, but basically um, at the heart of this family are three cousins and they want to change the future. Um, but it's not as easy as us just doing it, even if you were born with the ability. And I did a really bad job of explaining that book. Just go Google the book, All the Crooked Saints, and find out what it's about. That's the book we're picking. And it's being released on Tuesday, as far as I know. Right. Yes, so get by. Oh, me, it's not out yet. Okay, I'll have to wait for it. You can still buy it from Book Depository. Now it seems. And if you have a Kindle, it's like two euro on Kindle or three euro on Kindle. It's like three euro on Kindle? Yeah. Oh, man. It's That's all I can say. At least you get the hard copy. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Anyway, that is our book club for September. Hope everybody enjoyed it. And if you didn't catch the live show, you'll be able to yes, get it on YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Bye.